This time we'll be taking apart the old IPG laser. It has a wavelength of about 1.5 micrometers. Unfortunately it broke many years ago and once it was sent for repair they quoted a price which was basically a new laser. So it was returned and upon its return it was discovered that the company for safety reasons as they claimed uh, have cut every single fiber inside of the laser turning it effectively into a brick. Uh, so it was disposed of. Now before it goes to the scrapyard, let's take a look inside. On the left we see a large power supply with some mains voltage components. In the front there are some electronics and at the back center is the main laser module. Beneath this plate there are more components as you see. Let's take out the driver board for the laser diodes and take a look underneath it. Here we see the laser diodes which are pumping the active medium in the primary fiber. Now let's take out the board with the seat laser. It is the master oscillator. Its output is coupled into the doped fiber which is pumped by the 12 laser diodes that are placed on the left. Let's behold the seat laser in all its glory. It's the golden part at the top. The package contains a Peltier element so that it can be temperature controlled. Let's set the laser aside and take a look into this top part we moved earlier. Let's see if there is something interesting inside it. Well, apparently not. Nothing to see here, just a fiber gunked in a lot of silicone. So let's take our focus back to the main laser unit. So here we have the driver board for the pump diodes. As you see mostly there are just MOSFETs on it and some electronics to control it as well as some potentiometers for fine adjustment. Let's proceed with removing of what's left from the laser module. What we see beneath it is a large heatsink. Through it, four fans are blowing a lot of air to keep the laser diodes at operational temperature. When the laser was still alive, this was his output. We got here up to 20 watts of laser radiation. Now let's take a closer look on what's left from the laser module. Yeah, a lot of fibers. Hard to say where to start. Maybe let's start with this black thing here.
Hmm, I don't really see how this is fixed. I already removed the screws. Well, let's try to use some unreasonable force. Whoops. Uh, I guess that was a pretty element. Pretty well glued to the to the thing. Hmm, I wonder what this is. Let's take a look inside. There is not so much inside, just a fiber and a piece of metal. I guess this component is intended to m modify the fiber length by heating or cooling and thus pulling it longer or compressing it. Another mystery box. Let's set it aside for later and continue with the rest of the laser unit. Well, it seems fiber lasers are quite boring to tear down. Just a lot of splice together fibers and not much that one can see directly. I guess this component will be gunked with silicon just like the other one, but let's take a look inside anyways. Just even more splice together fibers. I guess the only reason for gunking is was to provide better temperature stability. Let's get rid of this mess and let's focus on this mystery box from earlier. What do we have here? A fiber coupler or out coupler, depends on, on which end it's positioned. Since the fibers were cut, it's difficult to say wha which side was the input and which the output. I guess the other side will also have a fiber coupler like this one. Yep, sure enough, that's a fiber coupler, alright although it's pretty well gunked 
I guess it's time for some more unreasonable force. And here it is. Hmm, interesting. So here we have some beam splitter cube and some optics aligned with the hole on this side of the thing. Probably for a photodiode to measure the power, although I haven't seen a photodiode there as far as I remember. Let's take a look what's on the other side of this cube. Strange, another beam splitter cube. I wonder what the purpose of this part was. It has two beam splitter cubes on two sides, under 35 degree angle to each other, and a small optic to divert some light towards a photodiode probably. I guess it was intended to divert the pumping light sideways so that it hits the sides of the cube and whatever is there gets absorbed instead of exiting the laser aperture so that we only get the intended laser wavelength out of it. Well, that was the laser part of the laser. The only thing now left is to take apart the rest of the electronics.
that was a lot of work to take everything apart. Let's recap what parts we have left. So, of course, we have the laser diodes left, which might be working and could be used for something later. We have a display and uh, ele some electronics, which is not so interesting. We have the driver board, which at least might provide some powerful MOSFET. Then we w we have the seat laser board. I think I will te tear down the seat laser in a later video. It will need to be cut open, so it might be exciting. I hope you enjoyed watching it. See you next time.